an eight original production. Arizona Teacher of the Year 2013 is made possible by support from the Arizona Educational Foundation, celebrating and promoting educational excellence in Arizona since 1983. I feel like I do make a difference in the lives of all of my kids every day. Um, and that's one of the reasons I teach. So gaining an appreciation of learning and seeing where it gets you in life is something that I definitely want to share with my students. A great teacher um, inspires learning in students and the desire to learn more. I think a great teacher helps prepare students for life. I love working with kids. Um, they are smart and they are fun and they are entertaining and each day when they come into class you never know what you're going to get from them. I think the way that I make a difference in students' lives is that I, that I listen to them um, and they can tell I'm listening. The Arizona Teacher of the Year program is the only statewide program that spotlights the contributions of Arizona's teachers. Profiles of each Ambassador for Excellence give us a glimpse into their classrooms, followed by the announcement of the 2013 Arizona Teacher of the Year. Ms. Kowalski should be the Teacher of the Year because she won't give up on you, nice and kind, and once you walk in for school and you start to learn and, li and listen, and then when it's time to go, you don't want to leave because it's so fun learning. And then she's like one of the best teachers. Miss Becky should be Teacher of the Year because she's like awesome and I never want to leave school either because she makes everything better and more fun. And I just think she should win because she's very kind and she's really fun and awesome. Yeah, and I don't think any other teacher is like Miss Becky. You know what I have to say? That as a very old learner, these moments of confusion, I mean, look at Logan over there. <laughs> these moments of confusion are the best way to learn, okay? This was not in my lesson plans for today, but but the, this is good. The, the, this kind of stuff that happens helps us learn better and it helps us learn quicker. So thank you, Emma, for bringing that up. If you ask me to describe Becky as a teacher, I would say that um, she teaches with her heart. That heart, it fills up the whole school. She's a very skilled teacher, but when I walk into her classroom, I feel the sense of community that she builds with her children, and that just jumps right out at me. This is her second year here at Borton School, and it was apparent the second week that she was here that her particular gift with a classroom is to bring them together as a community of learners and then to move them from where they are forward to, um, to meet the standards and to become compassionate with each other and with other members of the community, parents, teachers, and, and uh, other children in the school. So remember, when somebody in here is talking, she's the teacher. You're the teacher. I'm not just the only teacher. So when, when somebody's talking, you need to be looking at her. I definitely believe in, in collaborative work, cooperative learning, because I've told my kids, they know from day one that I'm not the only teacher in there, and they can learn from somebody else so easily. In fact, I may not even um, understand a thinking strategy that somebody else has, but somebody else might understand it. So, you know, daily we share our thinking. I love that. We've only been di doing division for two days, and you've already got the relationship between division and multiplication. I think the most important trait that I bring into the classroom every day is the love that I have for the kids and um, the acceptance of them, no matter who they are or where they are in their learning. And so when the kids start out in my room every year, I tell them that um, I will love them and care for them as much as I do my own kids. And they start to believe that, I think. So I feel like that's the most important trait. I know that after 29 years of experience, I have a lot of you know, tools in my toolbox. And so I feel like I'm an effective educator. But 
if the children can't walk into the classroom and feel safe and loved and um, cared for, then they're not going to learn no matter what's in my toolbox. I think Ms. Connor should be the teacher of the year because she makes learning fun, and her subject is math, which typically isn't a fun subject, but she makes it fun where it's not just a boring subject for everyone, it's fun for all of us, including her. To me, I don't think there's any other teacher that's done it better. Mm -hmm. that's, all, that's all I can really say. I mean, her attitude, she comes to class pumped, will, willing to do whatever it takes to help you as an individual. You know, she'll step back from the class and be like, okay, now what do you need? She makes students want to try harder, do their best, and she will always be there to motivate you, and she always makes extra time for students, and students are her first priority, and I think she definitely deserves Teacher of the Year. And Ms. Connor, uh, Ms. Connor, she sets an example for every single student that walks into her door. Like, she sets an example, like, you meet her, and then you want to be like her, so I think uh, other teachers will want to be like her if she becomes the Arizona Teaching Year. Has anybody gotten to the challenge yet? Number three? You didn't want to start with the challenge? Why not? Lindsay would make a great teacher of the year. When she's teaching in front of the classroom, she instills a love of math in her kids that I haven't seen with other teachers. They come out of her math class and these students want to now be engineers, they want to be mathematicians, they want to major in math in college. And that's so exciting to see our kids come with that love of math that maybe they didn't have before. And she makes math accessible to them. She makes it related to the real world. When kids at, at middle school really need a dynamic, engaging teacher, Lindsay's the one who brings them in and develops that love of math. Now what you have is a link that will open up to you two examples of what we talked about yesterday. So how to use algebra tiles to show equations because one of our goals is not just to understand math by the steps, but to understand why it works that way. So today, your objective is to figure out well, why am I using inverse operations to solve equations? How does it work that way? So by doing that, you'll have your algebra tiles and you'll be able to move them around and cancel things out and figure out how to solve for your variable. I teach because I want students to have a future. I want to create um, dreams for kids. I want to give them the skills and the tools that they need to be successful. Because today's kids are living in an environment full of um, broken homes, poverty, violence, and it's not easy being a kid, and it's especially not easy being a middle school kid, because you have a lot to figure out in life. But being a middle school teacher, I get to work with those kids, and I get to influence them in a way that inspires them and lets them create dreams for themselves. So the reason that I'm a teacher is so that I can help kids achieve their dreams, that I can help them create a future that's better than maybe what they're living in right now. Because I really believe that education is the biggest gift that you can give a child. So you almost got to the challenge? Almost. You can do it tomorrow. Tomorrow. That's what you have to look forward to. Yes. <laughs> Ms. Hannah has changed my life because every morning when I come to school, like, I'm happy, I'm excited to do math and classwork. Ms. Herrera has changed my life and by looking, when we come in the class, she, like, I feel very welcome in her class by learning and she has a very bright personality. She has a very bright personality. She, she has a smile every day even though the world can be ending, she's gonna still be happy. Like she concentrates on the student. Ms. Herrera is a great person because when when she is trying to help someone and the and the person is, is not focusing, she stand, she spends all her time with them until she get until he gets them right. Ms. Herrera is such an inspiring person. <laughs> she's always so like cheerful and happy to teach and she's like changing my life a lot. To have a teacher spend many, many hours uh, analyzing students, uh, their needs, uh, where they need to be, and then to go in and embrace 
new um, ideas of instruction, for example, our one-to-one -one technology. Taking that on and, and looking at how she can best instruct students using technology, but also instruct students in a way that they can understand. Um, and they can understand it in a way that would make them be successful in the classroom. Um, whether it be a regular ed student or whether it be a special ed student, it doesn't matter to her. It's about what makes students successful in the classroom. And it may not just be in her classroom, it's in all classrooms that we have on campus, in the math realm, in, in the special ed realm, you know, what is best for students. And, and she does whatever she can to make that environment successful for them. What part of the triangle does that represent? Does anyone remember the vocabulary word? The legs, good. Anytime we have a right angle, and we see our right angle here, the sides that make the right angle are the legs of the triangle. Good. The so. most important trait that I bring into the classroom is my own belief um, that my students can learn. Um, no matter what they bring to the table, they are all capable of learning and capable of doing well. And then along with that, it's my determination to help them be able to learn. So when I have a student that comes into my classroom and maybe I'm teaching one way and that's not working for them, um, figuring out and doing everything I can to figure out something that will work for them. And if I don't have it in my own toolbox, then I seek it out from other professionals and collaborate with other teachers or through university classes and things like that because my students deserve to leave my class knowing um, the information that they're supposed to know and feeling that they can learn. And so I do everything that I can to help them do that. I think Lamon should definitely be Teacher of the Year because she brings everything to life in what she's teaching. I would love to learn any subject if she was teaching it, just because she always shows her her passion and everything she does. Yeah, I agree, and like she puts so much time and effort into everything and gives us all these opportunities to succeed. I mean, a lot of teachers don't really do that. They make it hard to pass their class, but with her, she totally just gives us the chance and gives us the materials to get an A, and all we have to do is just follow her lead. And she like puts like a bunch of time into her lessons. Like her powerpoints aren't just like a bunch of like words that we copy down. They're actually like she puts so much enthusiasm and just like makes me want to learn so much. And I think her passion for kids comes through. Her life is about teaching children about subjects that she believes that are important. And like you said, it doesn't matter what subject she teach. I want all my teachers to be Miss Lumblum. And to me, she's selfless. And I think having that selfless nature allows her to be a better teacher because she focuses on bettering us and not getting her ego in the way. And yes, she's enthusiastic, but she doesn't have a big ego, and I think that's what's really important. My group chooses North. <laughs> Apparently, you are saying that you don't agree. <laughs> we've got the South, we've got the North, we've got the South, we've got the... Oh, all you Southerners, what is wrong with you? What do you guys got? I love it when someone says North. What do you guys got? The South, and last group? Oh, okay. So Nancy as a person, there's so many ways to describe her. She's amazing. And when I look at her as a person, I see different sides to Nancy. Nancy the teacher and how she is to the students. I see her as being caring and kind of really going out of her way to make sure her students learn and being aware that everybody learns differently and really wanting to help them to be successful. So she's a blessing to people around her. And just to hear her ideas and you know, be with her, you just feel like, oh, okay, things are gonna be okay because she's so positive. She's probably one of the most positive and energetic people I know and have probably ever met. Um, if we could take a little bit of that energy and sell it to other teachers and other people in this world, we'd be in a much better place. You make America self-sufficient. <gasps> Wait, I'm, I'm gonna interrupt you again. Who gave us the idea of self-sufficiency? What's his name? Oh my gosh, you're killing me. You're killing me, you're killing me. He came up with something called the American system. Henry Clay, self-sufficiency. Oh, well, you know what you're talking about. <laughs> All right, keep going. I won't interrupt you this time. Make America self-sufficient so after we get our industry better, the prices will lower and it'll even out. Oh, it might hurt the South now. Oh, you smart students, you. <laughs> I think that practicing excellence in my classroom every day is an example to my students. Um, I think that 
When I show them that I care, and when I show them that I am doing everything that I can to make sure that they understand, to make sure that they gather the information that they need to, it is an inspiration to them. Um, when they know they're going to come into my classroom and I'm going to be happy and I'm going to be upbeat and I'm going to be excited about what we're learning, I can see it on their faces. They're excited about what we're learning. Um, so I think that striving for excellence at all times drives them to strive for excellence. And it becomes a nice circle of events where everybody works together and is working towards the same goal. Out of all the teachers that I've ever had, I'd say that Mr. Snook deserves Teacher of the Year more than anyone that I've ever come across. He just, he drives you to do what you love and he makes you feel like you're, you're a good person. You know, if you're having a bad day, if you're, if you're just not in the right place, he makes you feel accepted. He makes you feel like you're better than that. I don't think there is another teacher that deserves this award more than he does because he just, the way he bonds with all his students and the people around him, other teachers, the parents, he just makes them all just, he just brings joy and happiness into everybody's lives and just the way he teaches it just it makes you understand. He is the teacher that other teachers want to be like because he puts a positive effect on everybody who comes across him. I think he should be teacher of the year because he just has a way of inspiring everybody that he meets or anybody who's his student and he just makes your life he brings a positive joy to your life that I've never seen any other teacher do yeah yep had a girl I love it problem solving don't come with me to with problems come to me with solutions huh you like that I wish I made it up okay <laughs> ready here we go and action Mr. Snook is a um, teacher that everybody wants to have, and he's the teacher that everybody wants to be. Uh, he knows how to teach content within his fine arts program, as well as uh, reach students at their levels. And he knows how to get inside of each student and bring out that special um, spark that's going to make them want to be successful in life and in school. Anytime you have that, we talked about this before, right, the dot, dot, dot after your line. Make sure that you jump on it right away. So, Bailey, don't waste any time. Did you just say, no, 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 no. I didn't say uh, your excellency. Uh, make sure that you just pick up on it right away because otherwise we have these weird pauses. Did you just say, no, I didn't say. <laughs> um, and it's awkward. All right, He's a leader in, the, in this profession, and he knows how to carry a, a message and reach people in a time that education isn't thought of as such a a positive place, yet our school has such a positive climate with students in the community because of Mr. Snook. The most rewarding part about being a teacher is just that feeling of, of giving of yourself and having the students reciprocate that because I think uh, there's a stigma on learning with kids especially because it's like it's work and they'd rather sit on a computer all day and be on Facebook and, and you know clickety click 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 on the computer when you know they can learn so much more by having contact with another person and so I think it's really rewarding to have that give and take and we do that in our performances as well I try to teach them that the music that they're giving is is to the audience and then they're gonna get back by their applause and their smiles and their their good feelings that they get from what they've given so having that feeling of getting out and actually connecting with people I think is really rewarding and that's that's what I get out of my classroom and that's what I hope they get out of life and sit. <laughs> good. We just need that moment of pause and freeze after we and after the thunderous applause that you're going to get from the audience, and you just smile and you enjoy it and say, "Hey, I'm famous." The 2013 Arizona Education Foundation Teacher of the Year is drumroll, Miss Nancy Lindbaum. <laughs> Students are awesome, and it's a great opportunity that I have to work with them every day. 
not only do I have a great uh, job because I work with amazing students, but I also have a great job because I work with amazing teachers. Um, I wouldn't be here today without all of the teachers that have helped me along the way. And through all of the different organizations that I work with, whether on, this, on a school level or a state level, um, I come in contact with amazing teachers who share the same vision that I have for education. They work hard and they love their jobs and they're dedicated to making sure that students achieve. And I am very proud to be able to represent them this year. Um, and thank you once again for this honor. A few weeks after her selection as Arizona's Teacher of the Year, Nancy Lindblom shared her thoughts about the experience so far what inspires her, and what she looks forward to over the next year, both inside and outside the classroom. The Teacher of the Year ceremony was kind of a surreal experience. I don't know what I was expecting. I had never actually seen one before. And when we walked into the room and just saw the all of the tables, I thought, this is much larger than I thought it was going to be. So we sat and we talked to all kinds of people as they came around and, and the day just kind of built and built and, and maybe the tension built a little bit and the, the excitedness built. Um, we all were brought up onto the stage and it was exciting and nerve wracking and they sat us all down and they said, and the winner is, and up until that moment, I mean, I honestly, I didn't expect to hear my name. So whenever my name was actually called, it was kind of a, oh, okay. <laughs> and now I have to speak to people. <laughs> so it was a matter of trying to compose myself in the, oh my gosh, they just announced my name and now they want to hear from me. So um, it was a overwhelming experience um, to say the least. <laughs> Uh, during that first year, I learned a lot as a teacher. But one of the big re things that I learned was that about the time of spring break, so, you know, I, I threw out the fr first year, I got my way through, and then I realized that teaching was a really hard job. <laughs> I really, I had half convinced myself that I had a terminal illness because I went home every day <laughs> exhausted <laughs> and I would lay on my couch and think to myself, I'm only 22, what is wrong with me? <laughs> There's a, lot, a number of things I'm looking forward to uh, as being Arizona Teacher of the Year. Um, number one, I really love education. I absolutely think that education is the key to the success for students, um, for their future. And I think that we've got some challenges ahead of us in education, so I w I'm really looking forward to being a part of addressing those challenges. I teach American history. Who wouldn't love, as an American history teacher, to stand in the Oval Office and, and meet the President of the United States? I'm also very excited um, to meet other teachers um, from across the United States and be able to see what kind of issues they're dealing with in their states and what types of things they're doing and how we can try to bring those back to Arizona and maybe make more success for our students here. I think ultimately I became a teacher because of the idea um, that I really liked history. Um, so because I loved history I figured I could share that with other people and that was my driving force for becoming a teacher. Once I became a teacher it really became about the kids. Um, it is an entertaining job. It really is. Um, they are funny. Um, we have great conversations. Um, they're smart. Um, they say things that I don't think about. Um, they surprise me every day. Um, I get great conversations and great insights from students and it makes me enjoy my job. And I think if there's anything that I can do in life um, to make myself happier is to be happy to go to work every day. And being able to work with kids each day makes me happy. And so it's kept me in the profession all this time. I think that one of the things that a teacher of the year can do to address challenges that we see in the classroom and outside of the classroom um, is to be an advocate for the most positive change that we can have. I think that going around and talking to teachers, talking to administrators, um, talking to the general public, uh, and letting them know about the challenges we face and what they can do to help us fa um, face those challenges. Ultimately speaking, in order for us to give a really good education to all students in Arizona, it's not just our job alone. We are a big part of that as teachers, a in fact, the key part of that as teachers. But we need the help of the community, and we need the help of um, the businesses around us. It, it's a 
it, it takes a community. It takes a village. I mean, that, it really does. And we need to be able to inspire people to be able to meet those challenges with us. And I think as Teacher of the Year, that's something that I can share that message with people and try to get them on board so that we can do the best for students in Arizona. Arizona Teacher of the Year 2013 is made possible by support from the Arizona Educational Foundation, celebrating and promoting educational excellence in Arizona since 1983.